say so it's it's high time now that we define you define exactly what that kind of leadership means because because uh, because that's precisely you know many times many times when they talk about servant leadership they talk about it in platitudes see in generalizations see? so maybe it's high time that they specify exactly what they mean by that see? okay but it is time good morning everybody this is jake Kleachko. it's a tuesday morning and uh we're, we are here for, for breakfast but anyway we uh we're getting ready to uh, do our uh, gospel reading and commentary this morning. It's September 12, 2017. And the gospel for today comes from uh, St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 to 19. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray. And he spent the night in prayer to God. When they came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. I'll cut it right there. There's something more that flows from this gospel, but I'll stop there in order to comment on the first part where we're told Jesus departed to the mountain to pray. In this story, we learn how Jesus called his disciples, right? You know, there, there are many uh, anecdotes in the gospel where Jesus called his disciples, right? Some of them he called from the boat. They were fishing. Some he called uh, uh, like Matthew from the tax collector's table. And then we hear the story of uh, Nathaniel, who was called by Philip, right? Uh, so what is this other story where uh, Jesus calls his disciples around him? Eh? And then he, he picks the 12. I'd like to think that this particular story today is like the confirmation of the vocation of his apostles. Right? So first, yeah, he called them from the boat, from the tax collector's table, etc. And he all told them, come follow me. And they all did, right? But this particular occasion is when he confirmed their apostleship. Okay? Is when he now confirmed that these 12 people are going to be his closest friends, his closest collaborators. So this, this was a very, very significant, very, very important event in the life of Jesus and the apostles and in the life of um, the Catholic Church, because here is where our Lord confirmed for the first time the calling of the pillars of the church, the 12 apostles, right? So it was a very, very special event. Now, if you notice, this is what our Lord does every time he was going to do something very important. Okay? He prayed. He prayed before doing something very important. Right? Of course, our Lord must be praying all the time, right? Because our Lord is God and, and he must be, he is in communication with God all the time, with God the Father all the time, right? In fact, he himself said, I and the Father are one, right? I and the Father are one. He is the second person of the same blessed Trinity. So he is very much in communion with God the Father, right? So he must really be praying all the time. All of his conversations with God, right, is prayer. But in, in these very important, um, very, very important uh, points in the life of our Lord, such as choosing his apostles, he made it a point to, uh, that, that before he did something that important, he prayed. He prayed. He prayed. And this time, he prayed the whole night. And he isolated himself. He went up the mountain to pray far away from uh, from the crowd, far away from other people. Okay? He exercised what we call nowadays as mental prayer. Okay? Mental prayer. He went out to pray uh, to our Lord, uh, to God by himself. And he did this in all of his important 
uh, in all the important uh, highlights of his life. Like, for example, before he uh, went out to do his public life, before he got baptized, we see that he prayed. See, before, uh, see for 40 days, right? Before he, uh, his passion, right? The agony in the garden, see, he prayed. Um, before his transfiguration, see, the transfiguration itself was uh, a time of prayer. Right? Um, so we, we read that very often in the Gospels. So Jesus went apart by himself, going up the mountain or, or some similar situation to pray, to pray, to pray. So Jesus punctuated his life with prayer, right? With prayer. And you can just imagine that he must have been praying all the time. Now, tell me, is prayer easy or difficult? <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> you don't know? Huh? Is it easy to pray or is it difficult to pray? Hmm? Some people find it difficult. And you know what? You're not alone. Even the apostles found it hard. That's why they asked Jesus, right? They asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And our Lord made it easy for them to learn how to pray to God. How? He gave them the vocal prayer, which is called the Our Father. Right? Our Lord gave, gave the apostles the Our Father. He said, if you want to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, etc., etc. So that was the beginning of the vocal prayer, which we call the Our Father. Right? And, uh, and so the, the vocal prayers make it easy for us to pray. Say, what other vocal prayers do you know? Besides the Our Father. Hmm? What? The Hail Mary. What else? The Rosary is full of Hail Marys. Yeah. What else? The Mass. The Mass. Yeah. The Angelus. Okay. The Act of Contrition. Okay. All of the formulas. All of the formulated prayers that we know. Which we vocalize. Right. We say out loud. Is what we call vocal prayers. Right? Vocal prayers. That's why they're called vocal. Because we vocalize them. We say them out loud. Right? And that's the reason why many times I tell you, I cannot hear your response. Because you have to vocalize vocal prayer. You have to pray it aloud. And that is one way by which Jesus himself taught us how to make prayer easy. How to make talking with God easy. Right? Because in the first place, what is prayer all about? What is the catechism definition of prayer? Let's see who remembers. Prayer. How does the catechism define prayer? prayer is the Joe, a little louder. I cannot hear you. Vocalize it. I can't hear you. Prayer is the lifting up of our hearts and minds to God. Very good. See? Prayer is the lifting up of our hearts and minds to God. Very simple definition, right? And we find that, folks, in the catechism. See? The catechism. It teaches us the most basic things we need to know about the Catholic faith. In fact, later we're going to be reading from the catechism. Prayer is the lifting up. Lifting up to whom? Well, to God. Of our uh, hearts and minds to God. In other words... In other words, in simple terms, what does that really mean? What does prayer really mean? It's a conversation, right, Sophia? Right? It's a conversation with God. It's talking to God, right? Now, who is God? God is not perfect being, but God is Okay, yeah, but uh, 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 that's true, and that's also a catechism uh, definition of God, but... But in reality, what is God in relation to us? Who is God for us? God is our Father, right? Even Jesus taught us that. When you pray, say, Our Father, right? Who art in heaven. Because God is our Father. And Jesus came uh, precisely to reveal that God is our Father. He precisely uh, came on to earth to, to make us understand that God is not one big uh, super being up there somewhere. Of course He is, right? But more than that, He is actually 
our Father. Right? Now, tell me, how difficult is it to talk to Papa? Very difficult. Very difficult? <laughs> Joseph, how difficult is that to talk to your own Papa, to talk to your own Father? Come on. Huh? Easy, right? Easy. It's very easy. What makes it difficult to talk to your papa? What makes it what are the situations that otherwise make it difficult? Can you tell me? When you're in trouble. When you are in trouble. <laughs> what else? And when you're looking at him. When you're looking at him. Forget about looking at him. When you are in trouble. That is when it becomes difficult to speak to your papa. But if you are not in trouble, if you are in good terms with your father, guess what? It's so easy to talk to your father, right? Same thing is true with God. God is our father. God is our father. And if you know how to talk to your own fathers, if it is easy to talk to your own fathers, there's no reason why it shouldn't be easy to talk with your father, God. But, these kids are right. <laughs> if you're in trouble, it's hard, right? It's hard to face your father if you are in trouble. And same thing is true with our father, God. If we are not in the state of grace, if we are uh, somehow so ashamed of our sins, uh, if, if somehow we know we have offended God, it makes it hard. It makes it hard, although it shouldn't be. Right? Although it shouldn't be. In fact, in, it is in those cases where we have to put extra effort to talk to God because that's when we need God most. It's when we are in trouble. Uh, uh, we need God even more. Right? So there's really no reason why we should not be talking to God. There's really no excuse why we shouldn't be talking to God in prayer. Okay. So, um, and, 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 and what is the most important disposition? We should have when we pray. What should be our attitude when we pray? Huh? What? What's that, Sophia? Humility. We should always be humble, right? Humble. It's just like when you're talking to your papa, right? You shouldn't be arrogant. You shouldn't be answering back. You shouldn't be talking like you're somebody, right? All of those little habits which. We use even with the way we talk to our own parents. Well, the same thing is true with God. When we talk with our God, uh, with God, with God who is our Father, we should also be talking with complete respect, complete uh, humility. That is why that Pharisee who put himself in front of God saying, Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like this publican. You know, I give my tithes every so often. I do this and I do that. You know, he was a praying, so-called praying, not from the perspective of humility. Eh? He was very proud. That's why Jesus, uh, that's why God did not listen to his prayer. Whereas the publican at the back, he was beating his chest, forgive me, for I am a sinner. Right? And it was him that God listened to. The same thing is true with us. Right? Same thing is true with us. Whatever our situation before our Father God is, whether we are in good terms or, or not, with our Father God, still, the approach should be humility. We approach God, we talk to God in humble prayer all the time. Right? Now, let's see. Uh, let's do a little catechism uh, here. What are the types of prayer according to purpose of prayer? Do we remember this? Catechism. Catechism. Huh? How many do we know? No, no, those are the types of prayer according to method, according to how we pray, right? There can be mental prayer, there can be vocal prayer, and sometimes they add a third category, which is contemplation. See? Contemplation, which is a higher uh, 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 sense of mental prayer. Mental prayer is nothing more than using your own thoughts, not vocal prayer, right? Vocal prayer is when you use the formulations, Our Father, Hail Mary, or the novenas that you pray. Mental prayer is just talking to God out of your own heart, out of your own thoughts, and, and lifting up, uh, uh, making conversation with God using your own uh, heart and your own thoughts and your own language, okay? 
uh, yes, Chevel. When you say thank you to God. Oh, when you say thank you to God. Okay, so that's one one of the kinds of prayers according to purpose, right? The purpose of prayer. Okay, what else? So one is when you say thank you to God. That's a prayer of thanksgiving, right? What else? Adoration. adoration. Jacob, prayer. I mean, Joseph, prayer of adoration. When you praise God, right? What else? Two, huh? Reparation, Jacob. That's a prayer of reparation when you ask for forgiveness from God, right? What else? Supplication. Supplication or petition, right? Petition when you ask God for certain favors, okay? Now, that, those are the traditional four uh, 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 types of prayer according to purpose, but the Catechism now adds a fifth one, which is just, uh, uh, um, you know, a, a, a spin-off of a prayer of petition. What is that? It's in the New Catechism. It's called prayer of intercession, intercession when you now ask uh, God a favor for other people you pray for others not for yourself see? so it's also part of the prayer of petition but uh, you're petitioning for other people so it's called intercession it's the kind of prayer that the saints do see when the saints intercede for us they are doing a prayer of intercession or when we pray for the souls in purgatory see? We are doing a prayer of intercession. So that's the, uh, the, uh, the new thing. And it's all in the catechism, folks. It's all in the catechism, part four. When you, part four of the catechism, Christian prayer, section one, chapter one, article three. Okay? <laughs> Review your catechism, pick up your catechism books, read all about prayer. It is all there. Okay? It's in the catechism of the Catholic Church. Okay. So, let us make it a habit. Okay, I think one resolution we could have for this morning's commentary is that we should make it a habit to pray. To pray, just like Jesus did. You cannot imagine Jesus going about his day without prayer, right? I, I'd like to think every a little thing that Jesus did, since he and the Father are one, right? He always keeps talking to his Father. About every little thing he does, not only the big things, uh, uh, episodes of his life does he pray, like today, picking his apostles, he went up to the mountain to do mental prayer or contemplation. No, I I'd like to think Jesus prayed every time, every time, every little thing he did. Every time he cured somebody, he spoke with somebody, or he performed a miracle, or whatever it is, he must have prayed all the time, right? And you know, there's a secret to being able to pray the whole day. What's the secret? Ah, we do it all the time. Huh? What do we do at home? What do we write down there? <laughs> Where, how do we know the times of our prayer every day? The schedule. The schedule, right? Can we name them? Can we, can, we, can we tell what kinds of prayers we do? When you hear the knock on the door in the morning, pom, 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 at 6 o'clock in the morning, what's the prayer you do? Morning you do the morning offering, right? After that, what do you do? The... What other prayers do we do that are on the schedule? Prayers, prayers before meals, right? Happens every three times a day, right? At least. What do we do after we eat a meal? Prayer of Thanksgiving, right? What do we do as soon as we're done with breakfast? Where do we go? Well, before Mass, what do we do? Pray the we pray the rosary. So again, that's all on the schedule, right? We pray the rosary. Uh, and then after the rosary, what do we do? What do we do after the rosary? Mass. mass. We go to Mass. What do we do after we go to Mass? Thanksgiving, adoration in the chapel, adoration chapel, right? What do we do by 12 noon? No, you forgot the thing. Huh? You forgot. What? We do the angelus, right? What do we do before we begin school? Pray to the Holy Spirit. See? So, <laughs> folks, the whole day is littered with prayer that is scheduled scheduled all throughout the day until the end of the day where we do the what's the what are the last prayers we do at the end of the day okay one by one one by one. 
We do the act of we, we do the examination of conscience, right? And then the the act of contrition and then Three Hail Marys, prayer to St. Michael. Oh, by the way, we forgot that. Every time we leave and make a trip, right? What do we pray? Prayer to St. Michael. See, folks, it's possible to pray. The whole day, the whole day, it's possible to pray. You, one trick is to schedule your prayer. To schedule your prayer. Put it on a schedule. And that's going to facilitate things. In the same way that Jesus taught his apostles the vocal prayer. Because that was a way to facilitate their praying to God. In our case, we can put it on a schedule. And parents, parents, don't expect your kids to learn to pray by themselves. We have to show them. We have to be the ones to give good example. We have to pray with them. The kids are not going to pray by themselves. Until they're more mature and they realize the importance of it. But while they're kids, while they're kids, pray with them. Pray with them. Okay? Ditch that, uh, <laughs> that funny notion that, oh, I need to respect the freedom of my kids. And, you know, I'm not going to impose my Catholic values on them and make them pray and force them to pray. <laughs> Forget it. You want the Catholic faith to get ingrained in your kids? Teach them to pray. Pray with them. Pray with them. Teach them to pray. And they will thank you for it. They will thank you for it when they grow up and when they're more mature and when they can understand that prayer is an important factor in their lives, that God is an important factor in their lives. They're going to thank you for it. Now, perhaps they don't understand. Now, perhaps it might seem like they're being forced. Now, perhaps they might think it is an imposition. But parents, you are the parent. You have, you know, I presume you know <laughs> what's more important for your kids. It is foolish to think you are respecting their, 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 their preferences or their freedom by not and joining them and encouraging them to pray with you. But they will not pray unless they see you do it. So give good example. Pray with your kids. Teach them how to pray. Okay, we're going off to Mass. One of the most important prayers is the whole Mass. So we're going out there now after this commentary and this breakfast. Have a good day, everybody. See you next time. Bye.